Hi everybody, today we're going to have a go at making some decorative Easter bunting. I've provided a worksheet for this activity which gives you a list of the equipment that you'll need. I've also provided some templates. If you don't have access to a printer or you would like to do a more in-depth version of the activity, why not draw the Easter eggs and the bunnies that we're about to make. the first part of the activity, we're going to experiment with stamping using um, old corks. So you're going to need your piece of paper um, and your paintbrush as well. I've got some acrylic paints um, that I use around the house. Um, watercolours would do just fine as well. If you're enjoying these craft sessions and you don't have any paints at home, then I'm going to send you all a link um, with some suggestions on what are good paints to get started with um, if you're still a beginner. Um, I've also got a palette as well to mix my paints in. If you don't have um, a palette at home then something like a jam jar lid or an old paper plate would do just fine. And I've also got a little pot here to um, contain the water in that I'm going to use to mix up the paint. Right, so a little handy tip before you um, start your painting is I've secured the paper onto the table using a little bit of masking tape. That way it stops it slipping about and you having to hold it in place while you're trying to paint it. So um, I thought my background colour would be a nice shade of um, springtime yellow. So I'm going to paint the paper all over, getting right to the edges and filling in the space here. You can mix in a little bit of water as well. It helps the acrylic paints to go further and um, it means that you get good coverage of the paper nice and quickly as well. So all you artists out there will know that it's always good to get clean water and clean, a clean brush um, in between um, do, using different colours. That way you don't end up getting a, a mucky, kind of sludgy brown colour of your paint. So um, what I'm going to do now is I've chosen, for my cork stamp colour, I've chosen a lovely um, pink. So I've mixed in a little bit of white in here again, just so it's a little bit more of a pastel-y colour. Um, so I might need a little bit more white in there. You can see that you don't need to use that much of the paint. I've probably put only about a pea size in there. Um, the key is just to make sure we mix it with the water. And if we put a little more in, that means it will go further. So now that we're ready with our, um, our colours, we can start using our cork to begin stamping. So there are two ways you can do this. Either you could paint the end of the cork with your paintbrush, or you might like to just dunk it straight in the, uh, into the paint there. I tend to paint it with the brush because I find it gets quite messy. Um, and anyone who knows me from Art at the Farm, uh, I do get covered in paint, so using the brush just stops it getting all over the clothes. You can see polka dots start to appear. Um, it's now running out of paint a little bit, so we're gonna put some more on the end of the cork. Right, so the next colour that I'm going to start applying to um, my painting is I've made a pastel green here. So I've used a bit of green and mixed it in with some white. So once again I'm just going to paint the end of the cork, um, making sure I cover it all over and then start applying the cork onto the paper again. So I'm just now filling in the gaps Oops, and I've just mixed a bit of pink into the green, but <laughs> that's okay. It just adds to the fun of it, really. Um, there we go. 
go. So let's just fill in some of these gaps. There's a bit there. And we just want to cover the paper all over with our polka dot stamps. So now that our painting is dry, we can start drawing around our template and cutting it out to start making the first part of our bunting. So I've got my egg template here um, and I've also got my bunny rabbit one as well. Because I've used quite light colours, I'm going to be able to draw directly onto my painting um, using my pencil. If you were using darker colours like deep reds, for example, maybe purples, perhaps even um, a dark brown, uh, you may find it easier to turn your paper over and draw onto the template that way. So I'm going to lay my paper down on the table, put the egg into the middle, or the bunny rabbit, but I'm going to start with the egg first, and then with one hand I'm going to hold the egg in place, and the other hand I'm going to very carefully draw around the template. And I'm going to keep as close as I can to the edge of the template, and do a nice broad line. Then when I lift the template up, if you look very closely, you can now see the egg shape. Next with the scissors, I'm going to cut the line that I've drawn along out. Always make sure you ask for support when using scissors. Um, and always be very careful. So I'm very carefully going around the pencil line, trying to keep on the line. Um, we don't want our egg to shrink too much. If you're finding it difficult to keep on the line, um, a handy tip is just to do it around the outside of the line. Um, that way, if you do kind of make a few mistakes, it doesn't matter, um, your egg won't get any smaller. So now that it's all cut out, we've got the beginning of the bunting. We've experimented with corks and how we can use them to make interesting stamps with our painting. We're now going to have a go at using bubble wrap to make different textures and patterns with our painting. So for this part of the activity, you're going to need um, a kitchen roll. If you don't have um, an old kitchen roll, then you could put together three separate loo rolls. Um, that's what I've done here, and join them together with the tape. You're also going to need some bubble wrap, um, some sellotape and some scissors. So what you need to do, we're going to be using the kitchen roll um, in a way similar to using a rolling pin. So you need something that sort of width um, so that you're able to put your hands either side without getting paint all over you. Um, the bubble wrap needs to be about a third of the size um, of the kitchen roll, or even actually, I think this is more like half, um, and that's fine too. Um, you're then going to pop the bubble wrap down onto the table. You want the bubbles to be facing outwards, that way you'll get all those lovely little bubbles um, creating a pattern on your painting. If you pop it down on the paper, then put the kitchen roll into the middle of the bubble wrap. What I've done here, I've got most of the bubble wrap away from me and I've got just a little bit here on this side um, and then I've got the kitchen roll um, further towards me. We're then going to get a little bit of cellophane. Then, um, very carefully, we're going to put the cellotape um, to secure the bubble wrap in the middle. So you can see I'm just putting a little piece there. I'm being very careful not to put the cellotape over lots of the bubble wrap 
Um, if you do that, then what you run the risk of doing is squashing all those lovely bubbles. So I'm going to put it back down on the table and I'm just going to roll it all up very carefully, not popping all those bubbles. And then I'm just going to hold it in place here and get another bit of silicone. So I can use that bit to tape it here at the end. And again, I'm doing it at the end so that I don't go over the bubbles in the middle. And then I want to get one more bit of tape um, to do on the other end. Okay, so that's all nice and secure now. So you can see that I've kind of created a little rolling pin with bubble wrap in the middle. And the idea is, this is where our hand's going to go. And we're going to use that to create patterns on our paper. So we're now ready to start um, painting onto our bubble wrap. As with before, I've mixed up some acrylic paints. Um, so I'm going to use my pastel pink one again. Um, before we watered down our paint, um, that way it meant um, it, it went a little further um, and we've got good coverage on the paper. This time, I would suggest not watering it down. Um, it can get really messy if you've got lots of paint, water and bubble wrap going all over the page. So I've just got a nice kind of creamy consistency of the paint. I'm now going to use my paintbrush to paint directly onto the bubble wrap and covering all the little um, bubbles here. So I'm going to have a go at doing a multicoloured one. So I'm not going to cover all of the bubble wrap for the moment. I'm just going to do um, one side. And just make sure that you get all those bubbles. That should probably be enough. Okay. Um, I'm just going to move the paint out of the way. So what you want to do is just very carefully place the, um, the tube onto your paper. Don't press too hard because you might pop the bubbles. And just begin rolling backwards and forwards um, as if you were rolling pastry. So we can see that the bubbles are now starting to appear on the paper. Um, and because we're going to cut out our Easter eggs from this, I'm going to cover the paper all over. And if I just take this off the table, you can see also that I secured it in place, like when we were painting with the corks, um, so that it didn't slip about as I was moving the roller up and down. So if you want to have a little look here, you can see how we're really starting to get some nice patterns emerging on the paper. Pop your template in the middle and just as before, draw around it, cut it out and then you've got your next Easter egg shape and you can do exactly the same with the Easter Bunny as well. So the last technique that we're going to have a go at today is um, sponging. So that's um, how you can basically create an effect like this. So sponging through a template so we can make a little bunny bow tie or a nice bow for our Easter egg. So I've attached some templates um, of different bows for you to cut out and use. What you need to do then is either print off your bow or draw out your own bow. Then if you cut out the middle of the bow so that the centre is no longer there, that's going to be your stencil to sponge through to create your bow effect. So what we want to do is if we place that into the middle of your Easter egg, okay, just like that, now I would suggest um, taping the Easter egg in place and probably also the stencil you might find that both of them 
tip about as you're doing the sponging and it can get really tricky and messy. Now we've got that taped into place, we can then choose what colour we'd like to do our sponging through. So what you'll need is, this is just a little old kitchen sponge, always make sure it's clean and that you've checked permission to use it first. Um, we're going to literally just start dabbing the sponge into our paint. So we're using acrylic paint again and just like with the bubble wrap, make sure it's not too watery. Otherwise, if it's a watery solution, it will just go through and under the stencil and you won't see a bow anymore. It will just be a big blurry mess. So I'm now going to use the sponge just to start going directly into that bow shape. The lovely thing about using a stencil like this is that if you go over the lines it doesn't matter at all um, because once you take the stencil away um, you'll have the shape left behind. So I'm just sponging that all over. I'm just going to use one colour today but you could use lots of different colours for a multi-coloured bow or you could even just do the sponging as your technique to create your Easter egg or bunny. Um, you don't have to just do the stencil with it. It could be all over the Easter egg. Right, I think I probably need just a little bit more around the edges. I'm going to lift um, the stencil off the Easter egg. So I'm just going to take all the tape off and oh, that's worked really nicely. Just take all this tape away and then if I just show you all, there we go. So there's that one nice big Easter egg with a lovely big bow in the front. So the final part of the bunting is the assembly. We've now got um, our bunny rabbits. So I've chosen to do three bunnies. So all in showing off the different techniques that we've used. So we've got the sponging with the stencil, um, we've got the bubble wrap, and we've got the corks. And I've chosen to do three of each with the Easter eggs. So there's my stencil, my bubble wrap and my corks. So what we want to do is string them all together so that we can hang them up somewhere in the house. So we now want to use our hole punch to create little holes in our bunting pieces to thread the ribbon through. Um, so if you just use one end of the hole punch, you can just slot the bunting into place and just make sure you align it so it's roughly in the middle. Um, this is a little bit nerve-wracking doing this. There we go, so we've got one hole in the tip of the top of the bunting there and then we need to do it in the bunny rabbit as well. Um, so I'm going to do it in its ears. It seems a bit mean but I'm sure you won't mind. Um, so again just get the hole punch into place here as well. So he's now got two little holes in the tops of his ears. We now want to start um, threading the ribbon through. Um, so I've got this pink ribbon to go with my pastel colours. What you need to do before you thread the ribbon on is just decide what order you want your pieces to go in. So whether you want um, to do it with all colours the same or maybe you want to alternate your different colours, you might want to have all pegs on one side, running on the other, mix them up a bit, it's up to you, it's your bunting. Um, so I'm just going to have a little think about how I'm going to display my bunting. So having chosen where I want all my different bunny rabbits and eggs to go, um, I'm now threading my pieces onto the bunting. 
Um, a little handy tip is if you're using something like ribbon, use a little bit of sellotape to secure the end of the bunting. So let me just show you, there we go. A little bit like how you would finish off a shoelace. If you put the tape just on the end of the ribbon, it um, makes it much easier to thread without it fraying. So I can now put the ribbon through the holes I've made in my little bunny rabbit's ears and through that one. There we go. I'm just pull it along to the end and then I'm just going to thread the ribbon through the egg now. So I'm now going to add the last Easter egg to our bunting. Um, while you're doing this, you could be thinking where you'd like to have it on display. Maybe in a window, um, above the mantelpiece, uh, in your kitchen, or you could give it to someone in your household um, as an Easter gift. Right, I think we're done. There's our bunting. You can see our bunny rabbits and our Easter eggs over here. We've got our stencil bow. So that's a lovely way of showing off lots of nice techniques, um, brightening up the house for Easter and a fun activity to spend your afternoon doing. Um, so I hope you've enjoyed uh, doing this with me today. Stay tuned for more activities. Um, I would really like to see some of your work as well. So do send me some photos and see you all next time. Bye.